It's a great day in sports analytics. I'm Victor Holman, sports analytics expert, and welcome to the sports analytics three minute drill, where we break down sports analytic methods and explain how they're being used today in the world of sports. Today, we're gonna to discuss Markov chains decision processes and the NBA research conducted by Nathan Sandholtz and Luke Bourne. So let's begin. A Markov decision process is a discrete time stochastic control process. It provides a mathematical framework for modeling decision making in situations where outcomes are partly random and partly under the control of a decision maker. Markov decision processes are useful for studying optimization problems solved through dynamic programming and reinforcement learning. The probability of a player taking a shot is not consistent throughout a basketball game. The probability of the ball handler shooting increases dramatically as the shot clock winds down. Teams would rather take a poor shot than no shot at all. This phenomenon caused by the shot clock makes it more difficult to evaluate shot selection. Simply focusing on the type of shot will not be sufficient. Any research must also look at when the shot is being made and who has taken the shot. Data from the 2015 and 2016 NBA regular season are combined with play-by-play -play data. Information including the identity of the ball carrier, their location on the court, and the defensive pressure he is facing is included in the model as well. Defensive pressure is determined by the distance between the defender and the ball handler. Time left on the clock is also accounted for. All of this information is inputted into the simulation algorithm. This Markov chain study focuses on mid-range jump shots taken early in the shot clock countdown. These shots are typically considered to be less efficient than shots taken from other regions on the court. A simulation is run in which the number of mid-range jump shots taken, where there are more than 10 seconds left on the shot clock, are reduced by 20%. The simulation tells us that this reduction leads to an increase in three-point attempts, as well as an increase in turnovers and shot clock violations. Overall, the expected points per shot increases for almost every team. This is a clear indication that even a minor policy change can have a significant impact. Coaches can use the simulation to determine how changes in shot policy will affect the expected points for their team in a game. This will help them decide whether such a policy change would benefit the team and should be implemented or harm the team and should be scrapped. Coaches could also examine the effect that injuries to key players could have on the team. The simulation could be run with substitute players in place of the team's key players in order to determine the difference in expected value. While this Markov chain study focused on changing the shot policy, the simulation could be used to determine the effect changes to other policies would have on the team. This would allow coaches to fine-tune their policies, making large or small changes that would lead to an increased expected value. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you found it informative. If you'd like to learn about a groundbreaking approach for leveraging analytics to get players to execute team strategy, check out my Agile Sports Analytics framework, software, and mobile app. If you'd like to know how your team or sports organization can leverage analytics across the seven key maturity areas and 26 best practices, check out my sports analytics maturity model and take the free comprehensive sports analytics maturity assessment. To learn more about this and 150 different sports analytic methods, purchase my book, Sports Analytics from A to Z, available on Amazon. And if you need help developing analytic models that create a competitive edge, contact me for a free consultation at www.agilesportsanalytics.com or call me at 888-861-8733.